All right, so we are back. Matt Minnick's Bengals Chalk Talk here on Orange and Black Insider, brought to you by Cincy Jungle. I'm Matt Minnick. I want to talk a little bit about this defense because I think they did some really interesting things uh, defensively and got a lot better throughout the year. Uh, and and they ran a lot of different types of fronts. I hear people referring to it as a 3-4. I think it's more of a of an under front, uh, truly. Uh, although we do see a little bit of a zero technique. Um, but yeah, they're, I mean, they're very versatile in what they're doing and they're asking a lot of a, of a lot of different players. Uh, so just a few things to start off with, just to make sure everybody's on the same page and I'm not getting too jargony or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to talk about defensive line techniques. Now, um, I actually, I'm, I'm currently reading, uh, Wade Phillips's book, son of bum, uh, and I didn't realize that Bum Phillips is actually the person who created uh, the numbering system that's commonly used to name uh, to you know point out the locations uh, of the techniques of defensive linemen. Uh, so it's actually Bum Phillips who popularized this. Uh, Bear Bryant took it from him when they worked together at um, uh, at College Station, and uh, it kind of took off from there. Uh, as a lot of things do when a guy like Bear Bryant gets his hand on it. So uh, just to, to start off with, uh, the basics. Uh, if a defensive lineman is head up, that's an even number. All right? So right here, uh, and, and I talk about using personnel, interestingly, uh, this is Sam Hubbard. He is actually lined up as what we would generally, most people refer to as the nose tackle. He's in a zero technique, head up on the center. All right? Now, if you're head up on the guard, that would be a two technique. If you're head up on the tackle, that would be a four technique. I'm going to leave the tight ends out of this because people kind of vary a little bit how they do. Some people skip some numbers out there. They do some weird things. I'm just going to leave that out of it uh, just to not cause confusion. But all right, so here we have uh, it'd be a zero. All right, on the guard, it's a two. On the tackle, it's a four. Now, if you're lined up outside shade, probably heard that term, uh, outside shade, uh, of a player that is an odd number all right so we have a zero head up on the center we'd have a one uh just outside of the center to either side it could be a weak one or a strong one uh a two head up on the guard a three technique all right that's a common alignment in the three four defense a three technique just outside uh outside shoulder of the guard a four technique on the tackle and a five technique outside shoulder of the tackle. Now, if it is inside, if he's lined up on the inside shoulder, we take the even number and then we put an eye on it. Okay. So obviously there's, that doesn't make any sense with the center. All right. But if you're lined up inside shade of the guard, that will be a two eye. All right. Inside shade of the tackle, that will be a four eye. All right. So if going from inside out, we'd have a zero a one, all right, zero head up on the center, one technique to either shade, really, uh, of the center. Inside shade of the guard is a two I, head up on the guard is a two. Outside shade of the guard is a three tech. Inside shade of the tackle is a four I, head up on the tackle is a four technique, and uh, outside of the tackle is a five technique. All right. And then we get into seven, eight, nine, and all that type of stuff. Uh, as guys line up wider, as you involve a tight end, things along those lines. Like I said, I want to get involved in that because I, I've, I've met different people that kind of term things differently out there. Some people are skipping six and people, are, you know, so we're just going to uh, avoid that. Uh, cause it's not really too, too important to what today's conversation is going to be. Uh, so I'm going to look at some of the, Odd fronts, all right? Again, people are saying, oh, it's a 3-4. People are saying it's a 52. I think 52 is a little bit closer because because what I, what I think they're running a lot of the time is is what we would term an under front. Uh, and we'll get into that in just a second. This isn't a great example uh, because this guy is actually in a zero technique. Uh, Hubbard is in, in this look. Um, but we'll get into that in, in just a second. Uh, so taking a look right here, all right, again, it, it looks like a five-man front. You've got uh, Nick Vigil out on the outside standing up, all right? Uh, so he's outside wide standing up, but walked up to the line of scrimmage, all right? And again, that's uh, something you see in a 3-4. Carlos Dunlap is actually kicked inside 
All right. So, I mean, I would say Carlos Dunlap is really in a, in a three technique here uh, on the guard. Uh, we've got Hubbard, Sam Hubbard, uh, unusual position for him in a zero technique. So putting some speed there, trying to utilize his speed inside. And on the other three tech, uh, actually four I, all right. Gino's a little bit wider than Carlos is on the other side. Gino's in a four I here uh, inside of the tackle. Uh, and then on the outside, uh, we've got Carl Lawson. All right. So uh, what does this really do here? All right. Uh, so this is essentially uh, like a bare front. All right. Uh, which, again, this is not exact, but anything uh, where we have a zero uh, and two threes or two guys in the B gaps, um, you know, it's pretty close to, to, to a bare front. So right here. Um, normally you think of this being a big guy who's not going to get moved and who can kind of occupy both gaps. That's not really going to be Hubbard's jam. All right. Uh, now this is a third and eight play. So they're not super concerned about, jam uh, about, uh, gaps. Uh, and obviously they're, they're dropping Hubbard off here. All right. But this is more to utilize his speed. All right. But we've got guys in the B gaps. We've got guys on the edges. So really the only open gap here, if they were, you know, deciding, uh, that they were going to, um, uh, you know, if they're worried about the run, uh, you know, they would have Hubbard playing responsible for one of these gaps. Uh, and then one of these safeties who are, who are basically down in the box uh, would have to be responsible for the other gap. All right. So that's that's where the open gaps at on this. Uh, but really on in this look, uh, it's just a way of getting into a tray front. All right. Tray front is what we would call it when there's nobody in the in the A gaps. Uh, it allows for a lot of different stunts, kind of evens up things a little bit. Uh, now they end up only sending three. Uh, because Vigil is a linebacker and Vigil's going to drop off. Uh, Hubbard you know, is essentially a linebacker a lot of the times in this defense as well, uh, and he's going to drop off uh, into the zone too. Uh, so third and eight, and they actually uh, get a completion here uh, out, to, out to Harry and are able to move the sticks on that one. All right, so the next play we're going to go to is the very next play. Uh, and we'll go right into the tight film. Okay. Hey, again, a couple other things about, I'm just going to point out here. So I'm skipping around. I decided to use this Patriots game because it's a, you know, it's a, it's an opponent that I'm pretty familiar with because I live in the region. Um, and it's somebody who's, you know, known for being able to run the ball a little bit. Um, I thought that was a good film to look at. Um, but I'm also just going to, uh, you know, point out that we are really going to look at the second quarter and the fourth quarter. And the reason is in, my humble opinion, the best way to look at tight film is what I would term the butt shot, right? Uh, I want to be behind the defense uh, when I'm looking at defensive film. Same thing, if I was looking at the offensive line, I'd look at the other quarters because I'd want to be behind the offensive line. Um, obviously, you watch all the film, but I think for demonstration purposes uh, and, and you know, for, for teaching, um, I think a lot of the times it, it, it's better to have that butt shot. It just makes things uh, a little bit easier to understand. So this is an under front, you know, truly. Uh, and, and an under front is, um, so it's a Monty Kiffin thing. Okay. So basically, uh, over is how you would really expect a three, four, or excuse me, a four, three defense to align. Um, you know, you've got a four, three defense, uh, defining characteristic is that you have a three technique and a one technique, all right? Or it could be a two moving around. But basically, you have one defensive tackle who is playing an A gap, one defensive tackle who is playing a B gap. So over is what you would generally expect, but kind of makes the most sense, um, you know, if you only have four down guys, uh, is, hey, put that three technique to the strong side because they've got more width over there. They've got that tight end over there. You know, they, they've got more gaps. That's what makes the most sense. Uh, under is the opposite of that, all right, where you roll down a linebacker, uh, to that side. So you have three down linemen essentially, uh, and you have the a gap defender to that strong side. So, uh, this is what I, I would call an under, an under, uh, front. And to me, and I've, I've been talking about how Sam Hubbard is a, is an outside linebacker. Cause to me, Sam Hubbard is the Sam linebacker in an under front in this look walk down outside of the tight end here. All right. Uh, so we've got Hubbard walk down again, He's walked down to the strong side as the extra guy, all right? And uh, as you can see, we've got uh, uh, Tupo out wide here. Uh, he is lined up inside of the tackle. So what do we call that? We call that a four eye, all right? And we've got a one technique. We've got 
uh, a three technique on the weak side, all right? And we've got uh, we've got uh, Carl Lawson also standing up, uh, and he's going to be that five technique outside of the uh, the tight end on that, or excuse me, the uh, tackle on that side. So really, to me, this is more of an underfront. Uh, so let's just kind of look at it right now before anybody moves, before anything goes. All right, we've got Hubbard here. All right, we've got Hubbard outside of the tight end. We've got a B, def- B gap defender uh, to pull. We've got an A, a gap defender. All right now, again, this is a little funky because a lot of times we're going to put this guy out here uh, and under front. But again, I'm just kind of getting into basics. So um, where do we have uh, gaps? All right, it's really uh, just that C gap between the tackle and the tight end, that's all that's open there. All right, now on the weak side, nobody in the A-gap, right? We've got a B-gap defender. We've got a wide defender. We don't have anybody in the A-gap, all right? So those are your open gaps. Those are the gaps that really the linebackers, if there wasn't a stunt going on here, would be thinking about. So you have Pratt, all right? He's got to play this uh, this gap right away, all right? Uh, and you would have Vigil. He's probably got to play this gap right away just because of how lo- wide uh, Pratt is aligned, Um you would probably uh, you know want to want to have him in that. So, all right. So we'll take a look here now. This is actually uh, something I would call spear. I believe that's Monty Kiffin's uh, terminology for it, where you send both the Sam linebacker and the strong safety uh, Sean Williams here off the edge. All right. So it's under spear, sending those guys on that blitz. All right, and that's actually you know I had I had played it too far. I remember I was saying that it was, it was a little weird for, for Tupo to be in the gap. All right. He cheated. He cheated pre-snap uh, to get into that gap to make sure he got where he was supposed to be. So you can see he was originally lined up in the C gap. So the B gap was open. Boom. Now he steps into that B gap. All right. Uh, and then you're going to get a cross face from the nose tackle as well. Uh, so that's basically uh, what we would call under spear. That's a, a zone blitz concept, a, a Monty Kippen uh, concept there from the under front. Uh, and, and, you know, they, they have some success with it here. It's a really, it's a run stop, uh, you know, it's a run blitz, uh, and they give up a yard on it. All right. So they stuff that thing up there pretty well. Vigil does a pretty decent go- job getting in there and getting involved. So we're going to go a little bit later in the quarter and let me find where I want to be. So, uh, this is going to be a first and 10 play to start off the drive. And, we're going to see another another underlook. All right. So, again, what do we got? Uh, to the strong side, to the tight end side. Hubbard has walked down. All right. Hubbard's walked down here. Now, they've got uh, an extra body out here. They've got like a wing guy out here. Um, but he's walked down out there. So, better make sure we have something strong to the outside uh, edge there as well. Uh, Tupo. Yeah, I, I would call that a pretty... Uh, heavy five i wouldn't call that a four i could see where you would call it a four but i think he's responsible for this gap right here without without going too forward in the play um you got billings uh in the one technique uh and then on the back side uh you've got dunlap and i believe that's gino yep sure is all right uh right there so gino in the three dunlap uh now dunlap standing up uh, on the edge there as well all right, so again, uh, where are the gaps? All right, and that's what you want to think about when you're looking at the linebacker play. So if there's no movement, we got an A gap here. Now, remember I said before that because Pratt was so wide, Vigil was going to have to play that, but I didn't really like that because um, I wanted Vigil to be free on the outside. Now Pratt's more to the inside. All right, so uh, probably not a stunt here, <laughs> right? Pratt had to be there for the stunt previously. Uh, so now Pratt's in a better position where he can really play, all right, with action this way, he can get in the A gap right now. With action to the strong side, all right, he can get into the B gap right now. Again, this is a heavy technique. All right, we've got these two gaps covered. We're going to need somebody here helping Hubbard on the outside, but boom. All right, so that's and that's what a, a, a really a Mike linebacker, the most basic idea of what a linebacker, a Mike linebacker should be is A gap, B gap. All right, be able to fill fast, play fast. All right, so let's see. All right, so this is pretty, uh, you know, pretty uh, standard. We're not really getting any kind of movement in the front. All right. All right. So Pratt flows through the pretty well. We got uh, BW Webb coming up uh, for really because there's an extra gap there. He's playing the outside. Uh, and Webb, I mean, you know, that's a pretty good job taking on the lineman for, 
for a DB like Webb, uh, setting that edge, forcing it to cut back. All right. We got Pratt scraping. And Pratt is eventually going to be able to get in there and get involved. All right. It's going to be a six yard pickup, though. Um, I would like to see him backdoor it if there's a possibility of that anywhere. Which, you know, that guy kind of chopped his feet for a second. I think Pratt could have, boom, used some speed and kind of gotten behind it there. Um, but you got to know yourself. You got to be able to, uh, you know, be safe with things sometimes as well. Um, but we need to, you know, see him getting off that block a little bit faster and getting a little bit more involved. Uh, excellent job really by Webb. Uh, I also like to look at Hubbard here too, cause he's taking that thing on. He's helping to string it off. Right. And, and he's, you know, eventually getting off that block too, a little bit faster off that block, but I like the way he's holding his ground, uh, and getting involved there. So, uh, not too bad overall. All right. So I, I definitely think there's some interesting things in this defense. And I know people aren't, uh, Look, it wasn't a good year defensively, uh, but I think there's some interesting things going on. Um, and we did see more success as the year went on. So, um, well, you know, we'll see. I think there's some def definitely some positives here. So <clears throat> we'll take a look here. This is another another under front. Things are a little bit tighter here. All right. Again, Hubbard's walked down. Uh, he's kind of, yeah, I mean, I, I would say he's outside the, the, the tight end, but he's pretty, pretty heavy on him. Um, and again, I, and I, I kind of had a conversation with a, uh, another, another coach on Twitter recently about my use of the term heavy. I think it's just something I say. It's something, probably something that one of the people I learned from said, uh, not really a, um, not necessarily a standard, but when I say heavy, I mean, it's, it's a shade, but it's barely a shade. Like he's almost head up. Uh, so I would say he's play, playing, playing pretty heavy on the outside there. Um, so again, we got, uh, we got Tupo, we got Billings. Uh, it looks like we got Gino and Dunlap on the back, back side. So Gino and Dunlap on the same side with the three technique and the five standing up out there. All right. So what do we got here? All right. So Billings taking on the double team block. All right. Really, he's kind of getting pushed back. Now you got Pratt looking to fill, which is good. Now Pratt is filling, and this is an ISO play. All right. He's filling to the outside shoulder of a Landon Roberts. Why is he doing that? He's doing that because he knows he's got Vigil coming as well. So Vigil kind of gets himself into this gap, this A gap, this backside cutback gap a little fast, and that gets him blocked. All right. Now, if this thing cuts back, he's right where he wants to be. But, base, but really, because there's a fullback involved, there's, an, there's another gap. And Pratt's expecting Vigil to come on the inside of that. Now, there isn't a gap <laughs> because Billings uh, is is holding his ground there. All right. Uh, doing, again, this is what, it, what a nose tackle should do. Um, even though he's getting double teamed, he's not getting moved. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's just something with, with Vigil. It can be a little bit kind of actually slower to play this. Uh, because yes, he, he's got to have that gap if it cuts back, but he's also got to have this. See, it's right there just for a second. There's a thin little spot right there, and then it fills up. All right. Um, now they end up uh, getting four yards on this. All right. Running into, into a mess. Um, and he's just kind of manages to squeak out and, and gain a couple yards on that, uh, unfortunately. All right, so we are going to go skip the next play. Uh, stay in this drive, though, and we're going to see another under front. Okay, again, we got two stand-up guys, really. All right, so he's standing up the outside here. He's standing up. He's kind of squaring himself up to take on a block from the tight end there. We have got a, again, I would say heavy five. All right, you can call that a four if you want. I'm not going to fight you on it. Uh, we've got a, a shade or a one here. All right, that's kind of short term. People just call it a shade. Shade three technique. The three technique is uh, is Gino. All right, and we've got Dunlap standing up. All right, so again, you know, think about where the open gaps are. All right, Vigil really ends up being like the Mike linebacker here who's got the B gap. He's got the A gap. All right, and Pratt, uh, you know, Pratt's the the more free guy who's going to be filling the backside of these gaps. And he's 
playing on the weak side here, he's got a little bit more of an ability to, to flow here. All right. And help out with the outside run. So it's going to be a weak side run. All right. Now look, we get a double team. All right. Actually we get a motion here. So let's start with that. So we get a motion. So that gets Dunlap out wider and really creates another gap because we get a motion. All right. Uh, they're getting a double team there on Gino. Pratt is filling the new gap that has been created. All right. Uh, they get a pull coming around. And it's going to kick out on Pratt. Okay. So he's causing some, some mischief in the backfield here. All right. That's where, you know, that's where you're going to want Pratt on this look with the play coming to him. Vigil, I, now here I'd like to see Vigil going a little bit faster. All right. Where's this double team on Gino want to go? Okay, and I refer to combos as, as double teams, all right? That's, again, just kind of the way I was taught. All right, so you got down doubles and you got zone doubles. This is a down double, all right, because it's a power play. It's a down scheme play. So these guys are down blocking and looking to double off and get up to vigil, all right? So he scrapes over, and he gets picked up by one of these guys. And he gets pushed back a little bit and eventually dies at the feet, trips him up a little bit. All right. But look, hey, um, I want him to fill fast here. I, I'd like to see Vigil, boom, getting in that gap. Motion, motion, all right. Boom. Try and get in right there. Get skinny through there and maybe make a, maybe make a play uh, in the backfield on that one. Now, essentially, it's the same thing, though, like, uh, like we were talking about previously with Pratt, all right? So you can take that, and if you're fast, you can take it, all right? But you got to be aware of this gap and of the pull and the fact that the pull is going to really create another gap. So that's what he's doing. He's doing what I was telling you Pratt should do in the last one and kind of trying to scrape over, but that's getting him picked up. So he needs to use his hands, get off that block. Again, there's kind of some different ways to do things. The, all the backdoor stuff is just speed. If you see it, you take it, and you got to get there with speed. Um, but, uh, you know, so so it can kind of go either way with that. Um, but I, I personally, I think I think the backdoor was there. I think you should have taken it. All right, so a little bit later in that drive. Okay, now... We've got a zero tech again. All right. So again, something a little bit different here. Uh, I like this. This is Gino to zero. So what does this do? It's third and 10. Um, and you're moving Gino to a place where you've normally got billings. All right. So you're really doing some things with your speed here. All right. Um, now it looks like a three, four, essentially, you know, kind of, I mean, you know, we, we got, um, you know, these guys kind of floating around, but Look, that you have, you've got two stand-up guys in the, on the outside, uh, and you've got uh, you know you've got the um, uh, zero technique Gino, real athletic guy, uh, and then you've got B gap defenders here. All right, uh, your probably best pass rushers Dunlap and Lawson again using Lawson's talent in a different way. Now talking about using talent in a different way, you know having versatile guys defensively. Uh, look at Hubbard. Hubbard's the Mike linebacker. Right, he's lined up directly behind Gino. All right, so he's gonna stunt. He's gonna go. So they do all sorts of things with Hubbard. Right, we've seen him lined up everywhere in the defensive line. We see him lined up wide, stand up linebacker essentially, uh, and we've seen him lined up as a Mike linebacker too. And you know they've done that stuff with Lawson a little bit too, lining those guys up in the A gaps. So very interesting thing that they're doing here on third and ten, utilizing that speed. I mean, it's probably gonna throw people off a little bit. You know, Gino's got a reputation. I realize he wasn't a big sack man this year, but he's got a reputation. They know. Uh, and, you know, that's going to occupy guys uh, and allow Harbor to come off here. Now, they also stunt uh, Dunlap across, uh, and then Hubbard tries to come out a little bit wider, and you know, the tackle's able to uh, pick him up there. But he's getting some penetration. I think it's a really interesting stunt. I think it's a really interesting use of personnel, uh, sending guys from different angles here. All right, so on the edges, they had uh, Vigil and Sean Williams walked up. All right, Vigil is uh, is coming here. Um, and, you know, he's a little bit late because uh, they get the chip on him. Uh, Williams isn't really coming. All right, Williams, this is what I would call like a, 
uh, a mug technique. He's he's really he's really playing on that uh, that back, and he's occupying the back, which is a good thing. You know, he's he's not allowing uh, that back to to come off and help out inside, um, but not really truly trying to get after the quarterback uh, in that look. So again, something very interesting. Um, you know, I, I think people are frustrated about this defense, uh, rightfully so. 100% understand. I think there are some really interesting components in it. And I think as they go out, if they go out and get some more versatile athletes, guys that they can, you know, do a lot of things with, like they do with Hubbard, um, you know, like they do with Sean Williams, um, and kind of improve their athleticism overall on the defensive front, I think it's just going to get more interesting. All right. So some really, really cool things that they're, that they're doing there defensively. All right, so we'll go to the fourth quarter. Again, we're skipping the third quarter because I like my butt shots. All right, want to see uh, what the defense is doing from behind. All right, we've got a one technique here. Again, what is it? That's going to be an under front, okay, because one technique to the strong side. B gap is open. we got a player in the C gap here, um, you know, really playing in a, in a five technique. Uh, we've got Lawson standing up on the edge. All right, we've got... Tupo inside of him, right? Uh, and again, uh, putting putting your dudes on the same side, Dunlap and Gino uh, to the weak side. All right, now Pratt's gonna go on this one. All right, so Pratt is Pratt is filling. Pratt is going. He is taking that thing right away on first and ten. All right, but he's gonna come up short here, right? He whiffs. He doesn't get himself under control. Uh, so. Not a good look there. Um, Got to get himself under control. Now, Vigil looks much better on this one. All right. With Vigil, he's got that open A gap, right? He's stepping into the A gap. Guy pulls around. All right. And he fills on that. Now, I want to see him use his hands a little bit more rather than his shoulder. It's going to help him see what's going on, help him get off the block a little bit faster. Uh, and then he's able to kind of make a second effort to, to make this tackle for a game of seven. All right, so a little bit better out of Vigil. All right, again, use his hands. Maybe he can get off this block, make a play a little bit faster. All right, we also have a problem here, um, you know, a tackling issue on the edge from the safety. Base rolls down, not his best position. All right, I talk about versatile athletes putting guys in a lot of different positions. Base really should be a deep field guy. I mean, he, he struggles when they try and do this stuff with him. And look, oof, that's bad, All right? I hate this technique, this form here out of Sean Williams as well. Stops his feet, puts his head down. All right, putting your head down, number one, is dangerous. Number two, what happens? You miss tackles. You miss tackles all the time like that. All right, move your feet, keep your head up. That's how you tackle. Oof. All right. So now the good look uh, right there. Uh, we're going to go to the next play, I believe. All right. So the very next play. Now, to me, this is essentially an under front two. All right. There's a little bit of a change. It's a little bit different because uh, instead of a one technique, you have a two I. I mean, really, the gaps are the same. You got the A gap closed off. You got the C gap closed off. All right. So there's an open B gap here. All right. Um, now, uh, you know, in this case, they've got an extra guy over here outside. All right. Uh, Lawson's playing uh, outside the tight end there, though. And we got Dunlap standing up in the other side. And we've got uh, Geno Atkins as well. So. Uh, just taking a look at this, I think uh, we're going to see uh, a run from no gain here. All right. And good scrape from the backside uh, by Pratt. We'll start with that. You know, I think it's a good job by Vigil. He's a little bit more concerned with what's going outside. All right. Because that flow is taking him outside. He knows he's got, he's got Pratt from the backside come in to help him out in the A-gap there. So not a bad job there. All right, let's, let's take a look at the front, how the front's holding. All right, they're trying to reach Dunlap. Dunlap just kind of bulldozes his way through there. He didn't even bother not getting reached. He just kind of makes it so they can't go outside. Gino fighting the reach, holding his gap. All right, and then from the backside, Billings coming across. 
and actually getting a hand on getting there involved in the tackle. So they credit that tackle actually to, to both uh, Pratt and Billings. Uh, so pretty good job on that one. And then we're going to go into the next drive. This will be the last play we look at. It's going to be a three yard gain for Sony Michelle on this play. And it's going to be a Pratt tackle. So let's see again, you know, pretty, pretty tight looking front here for the Patriots. Uh, they've got a tight end on both sides. They've got a wing too. They got a fullback. So, you know, what's going to happen. You're going to have everybody tight. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look at this one and we're going to focus right away on Pratt. Who's the Mike linebacker right up over the center. Excellent scrape there. All right. Defeats. I think it was a, an attempt at a cut block there. No, actually just a, just the body falling. <laughs> All right. So good job there by Pratt. Great job on the outside by Dennard. All right. Look, this is the value of this guy. And, you know, hopefully they bring him back. Uh, but he is a linebacker who plays who plays defensive back. I mean, he can do that's that's why he's so valuable as a nickel. Uh to me, it's the way he plays in the run game is incredible. Uh I don't, you know, there aren't there aren't defensive backs that can do that. And look at you know, he takes on this block. From Orlando Roberts, he keeps that thing tight. Um, and, you know, that allows Pratt to get in there and make the play and, and then, you know, getting involved there as well. So that is an excellent play uh, by Darquez Dennard. Now, Pratt's, you know, pretty well protected on this thing just because of the front, uh, meaning there's not really a lot of guys that can get to him to block him, right? You know, this guy's not getting there. This guy's not getting there. They're going to try some kind of double team to get to him or try and get Orlando Roberts on him. All right, but you know Roberts is going wide, so really they're just thinking they're going to get up to him. He's not really blocked. Uh, he just got to fight through the mess to get there. So pretty good job over, overall, right there. I think we've seen some really good things out of uh, Jermaine Pratt. Um, hopefully that development continues. Honestly, Nick Vigil, in my opinion, has played some of the best football uh, that we've seen him play in the NFL. I have never been a huge Nick Vigil fan. Uh, to be honest with you. However, I think the last half of the season, um, I mean, honestly, when they got rid of Preston Brown and put Pratt in there, I think it made Vigil better too. Um, so Vigil's a, Vigil's a guy you can survive with. I, I do think uh, I would like to see an upgrade of that position. I'd like to see a speed upgrade, but I think Vigil can and will be a part of this defense uh, moving forward. And I think he, he's pretty versatile, versatile. I think he's a guy that they like to send a little bit, even though he's not a great pass rusher. Uh, so that will, that will help his cause a little bit there. Um, you know, overall, there's a lot of talent in this front from, uh, Dunlap. I think Gino had a very good year stopping the run. He didn't have a great year getting up to the passer. Uh, didn't put up sack numbers. So I think people look at that and think he's on the decline. I don't think he is at all. I just, I just think he was he was getting blocked, you know, and I think he just wasn't finishing on the quarterback. And and I I think he'll uh, you know he's he's still one of the best interior rushers out there. Um, so you know those two vets coming back, if we can keep Lawson healthy, we've seen Hubbard, all the different things that they can do with him. I think those guys really, if you want to call it a three four, those guys are kind of your outside linebackers. You can do a lot of different things with. You can bump uh, Dunlap to the inside sometimes. You can put Gino in at the nose sometimes, which I think makes a ton of sense to get Billings out of there, leave Gino in the game, let him pass, pass rush from the inside. I think that's a, a great opportunity for them. Uh, so this defense is doing a lot of fun things. Um, you know, from a personnel standpoint, I think they've got a lot of talent. They've got a lot of uh, they've got some depth uh, if they can stay healthy at defensive tackle uh, with with Ren. I think uh, did some really good things. I think. I think he can, can can be very good. Uh, Glasgow's had some problems staying healthy, um, but you know you got him in there too. Andrew Brown is a guy I like quite a bit. Um, I would like to add another edge rusher, another guy that can kind of stand up. Uh, some of the guys I'm thinking about in the draft are are being called linebackers. Um, you know Zach Bron Bond, excuse me, from uh, Wisconsin, uh, Uchi from Michigan. I think are, are kind of guys like that. Um, a lot of guys in the Big Ten. Uh, Coughlin from Minnesota, uh, I think, is a guy like that as well, uh, who can relieve or come in if if Lawson is hurt from time to time. Uh, this defense, I think, a big part of this defense changing throughout the year was Lawson being healthy, Lawson being out there. Um, you know, Lawson is a big part of this defense, uh, and really, I think that that helped everybody. Uh, you know. 
Carlos, Carlos Dunlap, I don't read too much into this, but Carlos Dunlap has zero sacks in games where Carl Lawson didn't play this year. Um, now, was Carl Lawson always in the field when that, when Dunlap got his sacks? No, he wasn't. Uh, did, you know, is there always, it, there's not a direct impact there, so don't don't you know take that to mean too much. Uh, but I'm just trying to say that has a big impact. So we need to have somebody who can fill in that role if need be. But I think this defensive front can be pretty good. You know, add a speedy linebacker, add a rush guy, um, you know, situational guy and, and again that that's a guy too like I, like I was saying they're being creative already like you can do different things with that guy you know if you if you take Zach Bond in, in round two it's not just like he has to be Carl Carl Lawson's backup right put all those guys in the field put a bunch of speed in the field line them up in different spots uh you know defense doesn't know where they're coming from so there's some really cool things that you can do with those guys so I think if you do that um maybe try and upgrade the strong safety position uh and Put a guy in there who's going to be a little, you know, a little more versatile, a little better against the run, a little stronger. You know, I think it's Xavier McKinney. If he happened to slip, and I don't know if he's going to, but if he slipped around two, that could be a guy, again, who can be involved in the front as well as the secondary and, and, and be a movable piece. Um, so, look, this defensive front, it's not bad. You know, add, add a couple of things to it, and I think it could be pretty good. Um, and I think there's some, some, Exciting stuff going on and some reasons to feel good moving forward. All right. So that is it. Uh, again, we'll, you know, we'll keep coming at you with stuff uh, throughout the, um, the, the off season. Keep looking at different things. Uh, and, you know, Hey, you got suggestions, you know, comment. Uh, I, I do look at this stuff. That's actually, you know, the idea from this came from a, a YouTube suggestion. Um, you know, apologize for not giving you a shout out but of course i wrote it down somewhere and it's not in front of me right now but um you know this is uh let me know what, you, what you'd like me to look at and you know if i can find some interesting stuff i am happy to share it so matt manic once again for chalk doc here on orange and black insider sticking with you every week go Bengals. <laughs>